What is going on, homie Homersons? I got a cool technique video for you today. And it's something we actually don't talk about much on my channel, and that's swim jigs. And there's something that we do in Florida that I think is a little bit different than, than what you see in the rest of the US, just because of this stuff that's right behind me. Cover, dude. There is grass everywhere. And interestingly enough, it's, it's a swim jig technique that's actually a topwater technique. And I'm gonna show it to you today. It, it's pretty cool, and I think it's something that can apply even if you don't have grass. If you got bass that are super shallow, this is a sneak way to present a swim jig, and it's a cool tweak to catch some bigs, especially going into spring. Hit that like and subscribe button, let's get to it. So what's the concept and what gear are you gonna need to do this? Basically, if you like fishing like, you know, a zoom horny toad, a buzzing frog, maybe even like a gambler easy, some kind of like swim bait or soft plastic bait, up on top kind of buzzing it along you'll you'll kind of dig this technique because it's the same concept a slightly different presentation and sometimes it's a little easier to cast and it works a lot better when you have cover and then opening cover and then opening because there's a little bit of weight on the bait so the stuff that we got to do it bass mafia box these are my flipping jigs and swim jig so we're gonna need a swim jig so let me crack this thing open and the one that I like to use you can use whatever swim jig you want but you need to have one that that correlates I guess hook size to the amount of cover that you got this is the gambler goat and you can see the goat has a gaff so you need, at least for where I'm gonna do this, literally a gaff because the cover is so absolutely thick that if you hook a fish, the next question is, am I gonna open my hook? And is my terminal tackle gonna last? So this is a gambler goat. Now the one thing, no matter what across the board, and I highly recommend, never go heavier than a 3 16 This is a 3 16 head, and, and I'm gonna show you why. It's a little light, kind of medium range, but not a half ounce. We're, we're really focusing on skinny water cover. So it's a 3 16 gambler goat, just a lighter swim jig, but you want that stout hook. The other thing that you're gonna need is with my rod here. You are going to need a pretty stout rod, depending on, once again, the cover that you're in, but braid, B-R-A-I-D. Um, this is 50, uh, you can go up to 65. I kind of like 50 because it's a nice blend of, of strength but castability. 65 will shorten your cast a little bit and it just gets it gets a little bit more like a rope, you know? And I don't like casting rope, sometimes you need it though. Um, this is a 7.3 medium heavy uh, Halo XT3. This is a 7.2.1, this is one of the older color, like Corrados. I want a faster reel, but not like an 8.2, not like a super high speed reel. That's too fast because this is a reeling technique. Um, this is a little bit lighter rod than I'd say I'd use on like Okeechobee or, or one of the, it's like the bigger lakes where there's giant hay fields of this grass. This rod is more for the sparsy grass. So the other thing that we're gonna need is this little doodle right here. Now this isn't the only bait that you can do it with, but this is a gambler easy swimmer. But here's the trick with this deal, and I'm gonna rig it up for you real quick, but let's get out ahead of it and, and talk about why you need like a chunkier plastic. So this swim jig is a 3 16 ounce, right? So if I threw this out there naked, it'd get down to in like five, six feet pretty darn quick, right? Because we're throwing like a 3 16 to drag pads. We've talked about that as a top Florida bait, dragging a stick bait in the pads on a 3 16. You know, it, it has a bit of weight to it. So what you're actually doing with your trailer is you're floating that weight. By adding soft plastic to a jig, it makes that jig sink kind of slower. Um, not only does the skirt cause it to sink slower, but that, that trailer does. So what we're adding, this is like a five inch bait, four and a half to five inch bait. This is a bulky soft plastic trailer. And what we're trying to do is sort of offset the, the head weight on the jig to make that jig float up because basically what we're gonna be doing is burning it through cover. And this plastic, not only the tail, but the bulk of the plastic helps to keep that bait up and floating through the cover. Because if you put a smaller bait on here, it's gonna sink in a lot of this grass and, and really just get hung up. And the goal is to make this jig into basically a topwater lure. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and I do this with all my jigs, is whenever you're fishing cover, you flare out that brush guard. And what that does is a couple things. One, it creates better coverage for that hook because out of, you know, out of the factory in that, these are just tight glued in brush guards. They're not flared out, so they don't have coverage. And I don't want it to be thin, but in this case, especially on this Gambler Goat, this is a stouter brush guard, so I don't have to worry about it being a little bit thinner and then like hooking and hanging up. I can thin it out, get that coverage, and I'm still getting good, good hook coverage right there. The other thing I wanna do too is, even though we're gonna 
hopefully deal with some big fish and deal with a, a bigger plastic on the back i do want to shorten that skirt you'll notice i got a white one too you know we always talk about throwing darker colors in florida in that and 90 percent of the time i will throw darker colors the the one trick that's going on here is the water on this lake is a little bit clearer um and also I have been catching a lot of fish on, on brighter white sort of swim bait. So I want to translate that into the shallows. Um, the other thing too is it's, it, it is spawning season. And the reality is we might be scooting along and I see a hole in the grass. And that's where this thing is so cool because you can buzz it through the grass and then basically stop it right when you get to that hole. I want to have visual connection with that bait. And everybody knows who sight fishes and that white is a great color to go to because it's very easy to pick up. You get a high contrast in the water. So this whitish color, even though it's actually semi-natural because it's got some smoke and that in it, it gives me that visual contact so I can see where the bait is because it's on top buzzing through the grass and then I can kill it right before I get to a hole. So all I'm gonna do is basically thread this thing on. And this is one case, I always talk to you guys a lot about turning a paddle tail swim bait upside down to stop rise we talk about it on a chatter bait you know we'll turn it upside down and what that does is it keeps that bait riding lower in the water column this is the exact opposite as we talked about we are making this swim jig into a top water lure so i want it to ride up i want it to buzz up almost like a buzz bait i want it to to kick up and stay on the surface until i decide to totally stop it and then she's going to rock down so we're just going to find where that hook comes through right about there this is a hammings hammond's herring color um i really like this color no matter where i go because pretty much everything in nature has a little bit of like pearl and green in it so i think it's natural looking plus white kind of shows up pretty well so we're just going to thread that thing onto the keeper get it nice and straight like that and that's actually looking pretty good now you can see how big the presentation is right so this is a bulky presentation but as i said the goal is to keep this thing up in the water column. So that added plastic and the angle of the tail, having it down like that in a traditional kind of breaking sense helps that bait to ride up and go bloop, 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 bloop. That's exactly what happens. Got him. Oh, stay on there. <laughs> Even the little ones, dude. They absolutely pull, and then they get you in all this grass. You gotta keep them high and dry. So how do you actually fish this thing? So we got a big old kind of mat of grass, head of grass. This is main cane, um, Kissimmee grass. It's some pencil reeds mixed in. I'm looking for holes. Even though it looks super thick, there's little, like for instance, back there. There's, there's a big old hole. And sometimes if you're not super comfortable with grass fishing, you might wanna get up close to the grass and just troll around before you actually fish just to see how the grass folds and lays out to get a better idea where these holes are. That's my first target. And you'll see I'm fishing fast and I'm actually you know, covering water pretty quick and I'm not getting too hung up on re-fishing stuff. If a fish blows up, I might go back with a stick bait or something like that and pitch to them if I know they're there and they miss the bait, but I'm really trying to cover water and get a reaction. That's the biggest trick. I'm keeping my rod tip not super high, but medium high. First focus is those holes. Second focus is standard. That almost felt like a bite. Is, is around the edges. There'll be holes around the edges and um, you'll also have points. You know, your standard kind of cover because the reality is even though those fish aren't really kind of I don't know set up on structure they'll bed around those same things that uh, that they'll actually set up on pre-spawn like those points those turns those little cuts in the grass every once in a while you'll get kind of those hold bites but for the most part these fish come up and eat it like it's a floating frog the other trick is your hook set is a lot like a floating frog or like a top water so you're going to want to pause because these fish sometimes are bedding and they're a little nippy because they're, they're staging fish usually, um, they'll actually kind of splash at it, but sometimes they'll miss it. So your best bet is if you see one kind of blow up or if you see one kind of create V's and swirl on it, um, just kill your retrieve, just stop and let it sink to the bottom and then check. Almost like you're worm fishing or like you're fog fishing, make sure it loads up and then go ahead and set the hook. You got that braid. So even if they get in that, that totally thick stuff, you're covered. But it's, 
it's a great way to cover water that that is water that you really can't do anything with except fish like a top water over so it's a different presentation and it allows me to get a little bit deeper on some of this grass or some of this cover than i would be able to say with an easy or your standard kind of buzzing frog or something like that so i can cover water i can get bites i can figure out where they are and then my follow-up bait will be like a stick bait or some kind of soft plastic to follow up if i actually miss them on the old uh the old swim jig setup She is. Oh. Wow, she grabbed it right. Dude, you could walk over the stuff she was in. <laughs> that is so cool. Like, that is some thick stuff. You'd never get a bait through there. Got him. Come on out of there. Not a great big one, but that's how it happens, dude. They freaking smoke it. You stick them with that big hook, and it's game on, dude. A little bit of grass to go along with it. It's a fun way to fish, man. Especially if you guys love fishing kind of like shallow cover, or fishing top water, fishing like those buzzing frogs. If you love picking up a buzzing frog and covering water, this is a great variation on it. It gives you a lot more versatility in sort of the water levels you can cover because you can stop it, let it kind of flutter down, especially with that big plastic on it. It almost acts like a stick bait where it sort of just rolls down and does this little bit of rocking. That's absolutely killer, especially if you have bedfish that you can't totally see, but you know are absolutely there. And, and don't think about it just as something for grass you can do this around docks any kind of shallow stumps things along those lines anything that's sort of like a stop or an object in that ultra shallow water the bass use that to stage and they use those same items to spawn especially those that we can't see that are a little bit deeper which we've been talking about a lot during this trip down in florida but buzz that thing fish it fast stop go stop go kill it where you think there's a bed like a bed or maybe a bass like a piece of structure or something and then keep buzzing it but the biggest key is don't fish it like your traditional swim jig you're not slow like slow swirling it down there to kind of like bump cover and things along those lines you are literally trying to get a reaction you're moving it quick you're buzzing it on the top and then every once in a while you're putting some english on it stop and go stop and go maybe a couple quick reels almost like crankbait fishing hope you guys enjoyed this video give this swim jig technique a try especially in spring you can get some massive strikes dude and, and catch some big fish because they don't see a swim jig quite presented like this we will see you back out on the water talking fish and talking tips talking bass later guys